if you move down here. You have to realize it's not your property. It belongs to Mother Nature. And when she wants to take it, she's going to take it. Unfortunately, you know, they buy on the beach and they ought to know that it's not theirs. I wouldn't buy a house on the, on the ocean. Not down there. No way. Uh, we don't know about sea level rise. We don't know. We do not know. So the fact that we don't know, we shouldn't just say, well, there's a good chance. Well, Good what? 20%, 40% safety? Well, now we're in the realm of wild speculation. We built this house in 1982, and by virtue of the building code, we had to put our floor joists at 8 feet. And we chose to go at, at 9 feet, just to just seem to make sense. If you're in a floodplain and, and the water's right there, which it is, um, so we, we chose to, it was an excellent choice. So, And nowadays, you know, people are, are building a full story out to have storage and things like that. Plus, they're getting above the water. I mean, hurricane activity is omnipresent here in North Carolina. I mean, we had Irene this year and then Isabel previously. And, it was, and, we're, and we're all learning to, to live here, actually. I mean, with, with Isabel, they predicted a five-foot storm surge. We hadn't seen a true storm surge in about 30 years. And, and, and there were so many vehicles that were lost. I mean, we lost a car just because, you know, we had not seen that. So now we all take our cars and move them to, to highest, the highest ground we can find. We are at Pea Island National Wildlife Refuge, which is on Hatteras Island on the Outer Banks. The hurricane hit on a Saturday. Here on the refuge was really the major damage. So the road was taken out at Pea Island. Usually if you have a breach, they just build the road back. It was too deep to do that, so that's why we have to, they had to build a bridge. Plus that was where our administration buildings were, and you'll see our buildings are either missing or falling into the water as we speak. So it is no longer viable. So every year or two, there's a breach. And usually it's not hurricanes. A northeaster will wash out the road just as quickly as a hurricane will. And the hurricane was not a real windy hurricane, you know. It was hardly a hurricane, to be honest. <laughs> First of all, I'm not a climatologist, which is probably an endorsement. That's a good thing, in, in my view. Uh, but the average change in temperature uh, globally, number one, if you ever looked into this, this is an extraordinarily complex thing to to actually come up with a number. If you looked at how, how these things are recorded, you know, the temperature gauges, do you make a reading? Uh, one time a day, or 20 times a day, or 100 times a day. What's the degree of accuracy of this particular gauge here? Is it a tenth of a degree? I'm absolutely certain the Earth's atmosphere is warming. Um, I would like to uh, remind you of a National Geographic article where they tracked carbon dioxide with temperature changes over the last 400,000 years of geologic history. And so for these people to say things like, well, over the last 100 years, we've had 0.7 uh, degree change. Is a preposterous statement, in my view. Uh, I mean, from what I read, we go through these cycles all the time, over the years, you know. How much man's had to do with it this time, I'm not sure. And I don't think they are either. I mean, one way or the other, on either side as to what it is. 
whatever we can do to help. I'd rather be on the right side than the wrong. <laughs> There's a, a man named Lester Brown who's a, a, a written this book, uh, Mobilizing to Save Civilization. Uh, this is what we're talking about. This is not a debate that's in the, in the halls of science anymore. Uh, science knows that this is happening. An example that I like to use for folks is what the national parks are doing. This is a brochure. This is what's on the back. Warming of the climate system is unequivocal, as is now evident from observations of increases in global average air and ocean temperatures, widespread melting of snow and ice, and rising global sea level. That's a quote from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. That organization of scientists has come together with the best scientific information that we can gather. And 95% of them agree that, and this is 2,000 scientists from across the world, agree that climate change is happening, it is real, and we need to plan ahead for what we've already done in terms of the amount of carbon dioxide that we've added to the atmosphere. We did a spell a couple of years ago, just some kind of abnormally high tides. And when you drive down the highway and you see the river two to three feet below your road, you're thinking, wow, you know, this is, what if it is real? You know, what if sea level is rising? That's the other way to look at this. What if it really is? And, and I think, you know, if I err on the side of caution, so be it. I mean, so be it. John Droz, Jr. And I am a physicist, but uh, independent person, so don't have any affiliation per se, retired. So I look at that as a good thing. My name is Penny Hooper, and I serve on the steering committee with North Carolina Interfaith Power and Light, statewide organization. Uh, that organization works for education and advocacy about climate change within the faith-based communities. I've also been a biology instructor at the Carteret Community College, a local community college. I am Mark Hooper, and I am a commercial fisherman and a scuba diver. My name is Peggy Eubank, and I'm a volunteer, and I usually work uh, one or two days a week. My name is Kenneth Wynn.